Hi, welcome back. This is uh, mini lecture three, uh, third lecture of six that we'll be doing today. Um, designing for usability two, the module is about pervasive computing, so we need a better idea of what pervasive computing is. That's what this lecture is going to show you. So we're going to discuss what pervasive computing is by looking at some images. Now, the first thing to notice is that pervasive computing, all of this is pervasive computing, looks a lot different to desktop computing. You're probably sitting in front of some desktops right now. This stuff is different. So on the top left, you can see we've got a pair of sunglasses. Uh, what's special about those sunglasses? If you put those sunglasses on, they give you information about what you're looking at. So those sunglasses read data from the environment about what you're experiencing to give you an augmented view of what's going on. Imagine that you could meet a friend of yours, couldn't remember what the name was, and the glasses suddenly flash up the name of your friend. Things like that. Or what was the last time that you saw the friend? Uh, what's important details of your friend's life? Are they married? Do they have kids? What's the job? What are they studying? And so on. Um, the bottom right is a TV, uh, interactive TV guide and remote control combined. So this is for intera interacting with uh, TV. Again, it's a mobile device like a phone. Those things count as pervasive computing, computing that goes with us, uh, whatever we do that's every day that's always on. Now, the bottom left is a bunch of sensors for sensing uh, aspects of the environment, like temperature or light or air quality. Again, these things can be put into the environment to measure um, that environment and to send data about it to a server so that we're informed about the kind of building, for example, that we're inhabiting. How's it performing? Just moving on. Uh, another kind of uh, more recent uh, version of the glasses concept at the top left, and I'm sure you recognize this, this is prototype for Google Glasses. And it kind of shows us again what Google Glasses can do. So here is our user entering a subway. And the glasses show us that subway number six is suspended as we enter the uh, subway. So data in the subway is fed to the glasses and then given to us. We might be able to program this system with what particular lines we're interested in getting information about, for example, how late it is, how long we've got to wait. Uh, the second image there is uh, just a map. Okay? So this is Google Maps on a pair of glasses. So you're looking at your environment, and you can see where you should be going, not by having to look at the device, but just by looking ahead and looking at the information that's being projected into your eye from the pair of glasses. Uh, at the bottom right, we've got a very familiar use of pervasive computing, which is SatNav. Uh, we all use SatNav now, and we all wonder how we ever managed to navigate without SatNav. SatNav is a good example of pervasive computing. It links devices together. It links the device in your car to GPS satellites, to databases that are constantly being updated um, to allow us to navigate around the world in new and much more efficient ways than we used to. So it's all pervasive computing. It's pervasive because it's always on, it's always available, it's in the environment, it goes with us, and it helps us to live our lives and do our everyday activities in new ways. But uh, some uses of pervasive computing are not so popular. Uh, this is a very, very good example of pervasive computing. It's a speed trap. Um, now, I'm not sure what you guys are used to, but that's a UK speed trap. And what it is, is a big yellow box with a camera on it. As you drive past that yellow box, the camera looks at your registration plate. If you're supposed to be doing 30, but you're doing 40, uh, you get a letter through the post, and the post says, you were speeding at this time in this place, you've got to pay a fine of 60 pounds, and you get three points on your driving license. Very clever technology. Uh, some of us might prefer if it didn't exist. But again, it's a good example of pervasive computing. It's embedded into the environment. It uh, recognizes events in the environment. It recognizes cars passing. It can link registration plates to data and find out who you are and take legal action, if necessary, based on that information. Um, 
pervasive computing then is really revolutionizing the environment and the way that things are done now uh, and going much beyond what desktop computing can do. Uh, here is a kind of vision of what pervasive computing could do in our homes. So here is an, uh, an image of a smart home. Now, uh, in the garage at the bottom, you can see the guy's parked. He's got out of his garage. And what's he looking at? He's looking at things about the weather. And he's checking out a map of where he's going tomorrow morning. So he's thinking about what's his next trip and getting some information about that. Uh, he's also got a home office near the garage. Uh, he's looking at the value of some of his investments, again, projected on the walls. Uh, above that, you can see a home cinema, which is an immersive 3D environment. So uh, I think a game is being played, but the game is all around the users projected as a 3D uh, experience. The um, top left um, is the bedroom, and we can see that the bedroom has a kind of virtual wallpaper. So we've got a projection of a lovely beach all over there, so uh, we no longer have to have our house decorated in particular colors. We can produce different decor effects through projections, and so on and so on. On the roof, we've got uh, ecological um, power collection methods. We can um, generate power through solar panels. And in the bedroom, we can see analytics about what power is being generated. So again, like all pervasive computing, this is changing the nature of our environment, giving us new information uh, and new ways to behave uh, so that we're smarter, basically, and we can do things more easily. What's pervasive computing for? It is to transform our activities. Uh, computing for a long time was about work. The introduction of computing was about supporting work, office work. So we had things like spreadsheets, word processors, stuff like that on computers in offices. But computing has now gone into every aspect of our life, in, into leisure, into our homes, into our vehicles. Uh, so everything is being transformed. Pervasive computing can make us more aware of things, gives us a lot more information to act on, and that can make us smarter. Imagine knowing that your train is late while you're still in the office, okay? So you can spend another 10 minutes working before you need to go, you don't waste that time in the train station. So we can be more efficient and smarter. And we need to do less work to find things out and to get jobs done. If we navigate from one place to another, computing makes this much less of a hassle than it used to be, uh, much more straightforward. So it's all about kind of um, enhancing activities and really enabling us to do things in new ways. That's what pervasive computing is for when it's well designed. Um, the kind of godfather of pervasive computing was called Stephen Weiser. He talked about pervasive computing moving beyond the desktop. So Pervasive computing was seen as everyday, supporting everyday activities, uh, often about mobile computing. You take the computing with you. Pervasive computing is networked, and it's often about interaction with multiple devices, okay, which leads us into wireless connectivity, Bluetooth connectivity, things like that. Um, some things in pervasive computing are still visions. The smart home concept I just showed you, some of those things are still ideas, although they're probably on their way, but some of these things already exist and already having an impact I in the world. So uh, the studio that's coming next, all I'm going to ask you to do is to do some internet searches for images and definitions of pervasive computing. And then when you've done that, you're going to come back to me and a, a short video will be played and I'll give you feedback on, on that activity. So see you in a while. <laughs> 